Hello and welcome to Tricks of the Astray channel and today is the 15th of March 2017. Um, if it's your first time on our channel today we're doing something slightly different because I'm always like uh, you know trying to give you the best information possible trying to make you understand your world trying to make you connect the dots of what's going on around you now the reason for today's video is because uh, I always I always say on this channel that the Vatican has been responsible for everything every major event that has happened in this world right from let's say around the um, 1100s till now the Vatican has been at the forefront whether it be the first world war the second world war the Gulf War whatsoever wars you can name any major event would it be about the Great Depression would it be about the 2008 financial crisis um, whatever that's major uh, wars right problems you, the Vatican is not always far behind you right and so today we're trying to you know take a step away from what we usually do in trying to show you how the Vatican is connected to uh, the transgender uh, trans uh, the transgendering the system uh, how the Vatican is connected to the system that's put in place to transgender kids and to make these kids to live in a sex and agenda that's not theirs right so but today we just want to uh, we just want to take a a, a detour you know and just to show you study things just to make you understand and, and see and reason now we're taking a look at the Supreme Court justices and, um, and before we go in depth to show you that every Supreme Court justice on here that you see are all Roman Catholics now and uh, it's something that should be of interest to anybody and um, I always tell people, and I, and I, I want to, I just want to make this statement, right? Or maybe I should make the statement at the end of the video. I'll hold, I'll hold it for now, but I'll, I'll make the statement at the end of the video. But before we continue on to show you that all this justices are working for the Vatican, working for the Pope, right? Now, when you start looking for the truth. You're gonna make mistakes. That's it's one thing that you have to um, admit. It's something you have to come. You have to come to an agreement with that you're gonna make mistakes, because the Vatican is is specialized. I mean, it's a specialty that they have to give you breadcrumbs and bones for you to bite, so you never arrive at the right conclusion. So do not have any egos at all. If you make mistakes go over it and move on all right so don't get frustrated and um, be be humble enough to admit your mistakes and that you made a mistake and learn from it and just keep pushing so with that said before I get into the actual video of talking about the Supreme Court justices to show you that all of the Supreme Court justices are working for the Pope all right I'm not trying to stare anybody against the Vatican all right to have problems with a, a regular Roman Catholic right because the normal lay Roman Catholic doesn't know this I'm talking about the hierarchy so when I'm talking about the hierarchy I'm talking about your priests and the people who run the Vatican who are in and all of this all right so that's who you're supposed to have a problem with and if you're gonna have a problem with them I suggest because the one problem that uh, made the Vatican have a problem, the one thing that stung them so much and which will still sting them, right? It's not you uh, maybe trying to get into like a violent protest of the Vatican and all that stuff. No. The thing that tore the Vatican apart, which is still a problem till today and which they are still fighting, is the Bible. That King James Bible. That 1611 King James Bible is the problem. So in you trying to find out the truth, 
what I suggest to you, the right course of action. You, it's for you to pass this information along to whosoever cares to hear and then go back and study your Bible. Study the King James Bible, the 1611 King James Bible, if you can get a hold of that, which has the complete 85 books that was uh, uh, that came with the 16 uh, that came with the 1611 edition of the King James Bible when it was released in the year 1611. If you can get that, all right. It's always been the problem because when you, like I've always said, the Bible is not a religious book. It's a book of wisdom. It's a history book. It will show you how to think, how to navigate through the world that you live in and what you ought to expect. It will show you every type of human behavior and how you can deal with it. It will make you wise. All right. So I'm not suggesting that you should, uh, you know, go up in arms and, or try to cause any sort of ruckus or whatsoever. Passing the information around is the best thing you can do because information, knowledge is power. And this is what the Vatican is keeping from you every single day. All right. So what I suggest to you to do is study your Bible, pass the information around, have knowledge. So when these people show up on TV, the news media in your offices, you straight out know they're lying. And when everybody else knows they're lying, the game's up. Because you have to know that in every sport that you play, the people who make the sports work are the fans. If you don't have any fans, the game is useless. That's how it works. So if the Vatican has less fans or no fans at all, their game's up. If everybody comes to the knowledge of who they really are. So let me play a video. Um, this video is about Neil Armstrong, all right? For you guys who believe that the United States landed on the moon, all right? I'm going to play a short clip from Neil Armstrong, and I want you to listen carefully to what he said. After that, we'll get into the video. So here is the speech Neil Armstrong made. It was uh, the last speech that he made before he passed on. Uh, which he addressed, uh, like, I think, uh, a set of students or whatever. Now, I want you to listen closely to what Neil Armstrong here has to say. And then after that, we'll continue. All right? We have with us uh, a group of students among America's best. To you, we say we have only completed a beginning. We leave you much that is undone. There are great ideas undiscovered, breakthroughs available to those who can remove one of truth's protective layers. He is. So I paused the video right there. And um, at your own time, you can maybe rewind that part of this uh, video and listen to it again. But if you listen closely to what Neil Armstrong said, this is the man who supposedly landed on the moon. He says there's a lot of discovery. I'm quoting him directly now. He says there is a lot of discovery to be made to those who can remove truth's protective layers. That's a cryptic message, right? And being that Neil Armstrong was a Freemason, He's speaking in cryptic language. He says, there is a lot of discovery that you guys can find out if you can remove truth's protective layers. So, do, what does that actually mean? So, let me just explain a little bit. If truth has protective layers, it means that you have to go digging. It means that you have to uncover the lies that are surrounding the truth you have to do research you have to study for you to be able to find out the truth because if you can't do that all you're doing is wasting your time all right so neil armstrong was trying to uh you know leave a, a message for people who are interested in the truth because for him he couldn't say much about it because he was tied he was a freemason he had to keep his secrets if he didn't keep his secrets for himself he had to keep it for his own family for his own family safety safety so 
And one of the things I want to talk about and about Freemasonry is like we always when we hear about the word Freemason, we have an understanding that it's like Freemasons meet in a lodge. Maybe you've seen a lodge around your neighborhood, a Freemasonic lodge, and you would say that's where they actually meet. Well, that kind of Freemasonry activity, it's for the public. There are a lot of lodges around you, but it's not known to you. And Freemasons don't just come with the name Freemasons because that's what something we've been sucked into believing. That somebody has to tell you, I'm a Freemason. And then you can believe that. All right. And you can say, oh, OK. Um, the person has to specifically say, or oh, the, the organization has to mean with the word Freemason. All right. Freemasons are started in schools, colleges, those different fraternities. When you say, when you hear like Alpha, Beta, Kappa, and all those names, those are Freemasonic organizations. They don't always have to have the name Freemason. Probably you've heard of uh, uh, Skull and Bone. That's a Freemasonic organization. They're not meeting in a lodge. They're meeting somewhere in a house. In the schools, they go by fraternities. They have different names that bear no resemblance to the word Freemason. It could be an organization that just meets on Saturday. It could be your local club, your local pub. That's how it works. All right. So let's get into uh, the justices, right, for you to see what I'm talking about. So we start with, uh, now here is a web page. It's called... Uh, if you follow my mouse, it says www.supremecourt.gov about biographies, Supreme Court of the United States, right? Now, we will be dealing with the active Supreme Court justices. We won't deal with any of the retired ones. Because if you go down this page, if you follow my mouse, you'll see here that you have uh, uh, a Sandra, a Sandra O'Connor right here. You can see it's retired, so we won't be dealing with any retired Supreme Court justices because we just want to keep this video just nice, short, and tidy. And we won't be dealing with either David H. Suther, retired, or we won't be dealing either with John Paul Stevens, retired, right? We don't have the time to do that. So first of all, let's kick into gear here and start with the Chief Justice of the United States, right? All the videos trying to show you, this video is going to prove to you that the Vatican runs everything, right? So we're going to start with John G. Roberts, all right? Junior, Chief Justice of the United States. Now, if you're with me on this, you can just do this on your own. You can just type into your, um, let's say, any of your search engines, John G. Roberts Wiki, and you can follow me from there. So we go to John G. Roberts Wiki's page. Now, and one of the things I would like to tell people, uh, tell you guys, is like, you know, if you if you read a book, let's say someone handed you a book, and you rate the book, and you didn't know what you were reading for, you would read the whole book and still not get anything. And if somebody asked you what would you, what did you read or what was the book about, you would tell the person a beautiful story, right? So, for example, if you're looking for, uh, if you go to a Wikipedia page, I'm just trying to show you how to uh, look at stuff and type in John G. Roberts. And this comes up. You might read through his whole wiki page and not get anything. And before I even go further, I have to tell you that the wiki page on this Supreme Court justices has a lot of false information. The reason why is they are paying this much attention to the false information you are, are deliberately put not yet deliberately putting this false information on the wiki pages of the Supreme Court justices is to throw you off so that you don't arrive at the right conclusion or you don't make the wrong conclusion so it's more like some disinformation is planted here and I'll show you that in a minute or two okay so now let's go into John G Roberts and start reading looking at his wiki page now they say here, right, that John G. Roberts is the 17th and current Chief Justice of the United States. If you follow my mouse, you could see that right here, right? And see what it's talking about. But let's go 
further down a bit more to show you what we are talking about all right I'm gonna show you now if you go to the early years of John Roberts here right you can read it a little bit it says John Glover Roberts was born in Buffalo New York the son of Rosemary Nee Prodraski and John Glover Jack Roberts senior right his father was a plant manager with the Bethlehem Steel. He was Irish, Welsh, and Czech ancestry. When Roberts was in fourth grade, his family moved to Long Beach, Indiana. He grew up with three sisters, Kathy, Peggy, and Barbara. Now, follow my mouse now and follow me here. It says, Roberts attended Notre Dame Elementary School, a Roman Catholic grade school in Long Beach. In 1973, he graduated from La Lumiere School, a Roman Catholic boarding school in La Porta, Indiana. Can you see that? Now, it's showing you that he's Roman Catholic. He attended Roman Catholic schools. Now, let's go further down the page again to show you something else. The disinformation that's going to be planted, all right? We're going to go to the part of this wiki page that will say early life. All right. Let's see if we can find that and scroll down a bit more. Personal life. Okay. Personal life rather. The part of the wiki. Now he says, Roberts is one of 13 Catholic justices out of 111 justices total in the history of the Supreme Court. Of those 13 justices, five right uh, five roberts anthony kennedy clarence thomas samuel alito sonia sotomayor are currently serving and it says here here, here um and he, he says he, he's roberts is what let, let's just go back let's not read further right he says roberts is one of 13 catholic justices this is the this information they're planning now they're trying to show you okay that he's catholic but he's just the one of the 13 that means there have only been 13 catholic justices out of the total of 111 justices total that's false information right there it's meant for it that information is planted for you to drop your guard so when you look at this page and you say oh okay they're just 13 catholic justices out of 111 they're not doing much they're not the ones in control but all as you follow me on this particular video you find out that all the justices are Roman Catholic. Of this 111 justices, all of them were Roman Catholic. I'm not going to go too deep into that. I'm just going to show you with the current justices right here that all of them are Roman Catholic. So this is just throw you off. So you think it's just 13 Catholic justices that ever served in the United States. The truth being that there were 111 Roman Catholic justices. Let's go further. So the next person we pick up after the Chief Justice is Anthony M. Kennedy. All right? He's one of the justices in the Supreme Court. Now we go again here to his page. All right? And he says, uh, Anthony McCloyd Kennedy. All right? is the senior associate justice of the supreme court of the united states now why am i doing the supreme court in particular because there are the ones who make the legalities who make the laws that put people and bind people in bondage to the pope to the vatican they are the strongest arm of the united states constitution the supreme court justices and um, people, and I'm just going to throw this in there just for throwing in sake, because a lot of people talk about like witchcraft and sorcery and mind control being used to control people. The truth being told, that's why you need to study your Bible. Study the King James Bible and you will see the truth. Sorcery cannot work without a law. There has to be a law. There has to be some sort of legislation to tie you. And then there has to be a person.
who will implement the law or judge it. Otherwise, it will never work. Sorcery, mind control, and all that cannot work without a law. So the real sorcery in which the United States government, which the Pope knows, is to bind you with laws. And have people who will implement that law and guard the law and be the, ju and be the judgment for the law, be the executors of the law when you go awry or when you go against it. That's real sorcery. Now let's go back to uh, Anthony Kennedy right here. And we're going to scroll down his page a bit, all right? And what you're going to see, let's scroll down a bit more. Just pardon me for a second. Let me try to find the information for you, all right? Just pardon me for a minute, okay? So here is the information that I was talking about. It's still on Anthony M. Kennedy, all right? One of the other Supreme Court justices. Now, you have to scroll down further down the page to see that information. So we'll scroll down right towards the end, all right? And when you come down here, almost at the end of the page, it says, Kennedy is one of the 13 Catholic justices of whom five sit on the court as of 2017. It's telling you that there are five Roman Catholic justices sitting on the court as of 2017. But the truth is, all of them are Roman Catholics. They throw in some Jews there, about a couple of Jews. So for those who are following, who believe the hype and the story that the Jews run everything, when they find the Jews in there, they say, yes, we already told you, the Jews run it. But they never tell you that they're all Roman Catholic. Right? Can you see that? So this is the disinformation that is saying at the end of the page. It says, out of 112 justices in total, in total in the history of the Supreme Court. So it's saying that Kennedy is again the same story that we had with the Chief Justice. That Kennedy is one of 13 Catholic justices. Of whom five sit on the court as of 2017. Out of 112 justices in total in the history of the Supreme Court. The disinformation just to let you, you know, lower your guard and just think, oh, oh, the Roman Catholics, they're not really doing anything. The Pope's not doing anything. We have, we just had only 13 Catholic justices out of a total of 112 and only five in 2017 sit. Right? Or is it five? Yes. But they never tell you that all of them, even this 112 justices, were all from Rome. Now let's go on to the next person. All right. We've left Anthony M. Kennedy. We go on to Clarence Thomas now. All right. And at his page here, right? I, I'm not gonna. I, I'm gonna scroll a little bit, but I'll show you what it's talking about. All right. It says Clarence Thomas is an American judge, right? Lawyer and supreme official who currently serves as a justice. Of the Supreme Court of the United States, all right? Talks about his school and all that good information that if you're reading a book, you probably think that you read something. Now let's scroll down a bit more, further down, all right? It talk about he was born in Pinpoint, Georgia, a small, predominantly black community near Savannah, founded by freedmen after the American Civil War, and all that good information that will make black folk think. There is something or they have something. Not at all. So let's scroll down furthermore. All right. Scroll a bit more. Scroll a bit more. Scroll a bit more. And let's see if we can find something. Because I'm going to show you in a second. Just bear with me. Scrolling down a bit more to get that information out for you. All right and um, personal life so we come to um, his personal life right and I want you to notice something here just follow my mouse now it says Thomas now here's another disin disinfo all right Thomas was reconciled to the Catholic Church in the mid 1990s is this information right there 
He's trying to make you feel and think that he was never part of the Catholic Church. He just reconciled. So you let down your God again. And you say, oh, the Pope's not involved in this. It can be Roman Catholics running this country or the Pope. Then he goes on to say, to show you how these people tell great lies, he says in his 2007 autobiography, he criticized the church for its failure to grapple with racism in the 1960s during the civil rights movement, saying it was not so adamant about ending racism than as it is about ending abortion now. Thomas, you have more, more disinformation now, Thomas is one of the 13 Catholic justices out of 112 justices total in the history of the Supreme Court and one of the five currently in the court. All lies. All 112. All 112 right here have all been Roman Catholic. And you find out soon. Just bear with me, okay? Now, we go on to the next... Um, Supreme Court Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg, right? Now, for those who love, who, who believe that Jews, all right, run stuff, all right, then this would be like great information. Because when you come up here and read, right, and read about, um, Ruth Bader Gettingsburg, early life. What you see is born in Brooklyn, New York City. Joan Ruth Bader is the second daughter of Nathan and Celia Neamster Bader, Russian Jewish immigrants. And you fall flat on your face and say, oh, yes, it's the Jews who run the world and run the United States of America. You've been deceived. I'm going to show you that in sooner or later so just bear with me and let me pull this information out so here is we uh, here's the page again we go to personal life on ruth beta gettingsburg and i'm going to read to you he says a few days after graduating from connell ruth beta married d ginsburg right so ruth was married to a man called martin d ginsburg right that's where she gets this uh, her last name ginsburg from Later an, internationally, later, an internationally prominent tax lawyer. And then after they moved from New York to Washington, D.C., upon her accession to the D.C. circuit, professor of law at the Georgetown University Law Center. What is that? Ruth Bader Gettingsburg was a professor of law at Georgetown University Law Center. The Jesuit University, the Roman Catholic University, which has produced almost all the presidents of the United States. Now, let's just click on that, right? Just to show you. It says, Georgetown University Law Center, commonly referred to as Georgetown Law School or Georgetown Law, right? He says the parent of this Georgetown University Law Center is Georgetown University. Let's click on Georgetown University and follow me. All right. We go to Georgetown University. And what do you see here? Affiliation on Georgetown University. Roman Catholic Jesuit University. What is a Jew doing in here? Is she really Jewish or is she just a front for the Pope and the Vatican? <laughs> I got to laugh at this one. So for you guys who say Jews run the world, I'm just showing you one more time now. It's all a front. Ruth Bader Gettingsburg, the Supreme Court Justice right here. Is a Vatican stooge. She's just as Jewish as the Federal Express is federal. All right, let's go to the next person. 
Stephen J. Breyer. All right. Let's go down to Stephen J. Breyer's page now. Now, here is his page. All right. Stephen Gerald Breyer is an associate justice of the Supreme Court of the United States. Appointed by President Bill Clinton in 1994, Breyer is generally associated with the more liberal side of the court. Now, we're going to scroll down further to show you what I'm talking about here, right? Okay, bear with me for a second, okay? So, we're back on um, Stephen M. Breyer's, uh, Gerald Breyer's page, all right? To show you what I'm talking about, all right? We're going to scroll down a little bit, all right? And um, I'm going to read something to you. It says... In 1967, right? I'm following my mouse, okay? It says in 1967, Stephen Breyer married the Honorable Joanna Frieda Hare, a psychologist and member of the British aristocracy. That means she or he married one of the royal families, okay? As the youngest daughter of John Hare, first Viscount of Blackingham. Read again. Let's go further. It says, the Breyers have three adult children, Chloe and Episcopal priests. Did you just see that? The Breyers have three adult children. Chloe is an Ep Episcopal. They didn't mention anything else about any of the three children. But they showed you one who was a priest. Roman Catholic. Now, if that's not enough information for you, I have something more, all right? Hold on a second and follow my mouse. It says, Breyer wrote, The uneasy case for copyright, one of the most widely cited skeptical examinations of copyright. Breyer was a visiting professor at the College of Law in Sydney, Australia, the University of Rome. University of Rome rings a bell. We're talking about the Pope's school, and he's a professor, a visiting professor. So let's so just to make you understand this a bit more, let's take a look at the meaning on Google. What's the meaning of someone to be a visiting professor? All right. It says visiting professor, all right? A professor on a short term contract to teach at a college or university other than the one that mainly employs them. Now, tell me how you're gonna go to a school and teach in a school if you're not teaching according to the guidelines or you're not a receptive member of that school. Does that make any sense? But let's go further, let's go back to Stephen Breyer. Now let's take a look, let's look on the University of Rome right here. And see what's going on. We can click on University of Rome, right? It says here the Sapienza University of Rome in Italian, Sapienza University di Roma, the legal language in which the Vatican runs the world is Latin. When you see any of those words in Latin, the legal documents. For running everything is in Latin, then you automatically know that Rome is in control. All right. So let's go further down this page. It says here, Sapienza University of Rome was founded in 1303 with the papal bull, clearly showing you that the Pope owns this university, and Stephen Breyer. Is working for the Pope. I'll read further so you can just sit, just see what I'm talking about. It says, In supreme premenitia dignitatis. I may be chopping or butchering up the Latin, but I'm just showing you. You can follow my mouse. Issued on 20th April 1303 by Pope Boniface the Eighth. That's how the University of Rome. Was made and Stephen Breyer right here Supreme Court Justice is a stooge of the Vatican 
Let's go further to the next Supreme Court justice, right? Samuel Anthony Alito. All right? Here's Samuel Anthony Alito right here. Okay? And I'm not going to go further. I'm not going to just go too much further down into this page. Um, it's already right there. You, you can just follow my mouse. It says, Samuel Anthony Alito Jr., born April 1st, 1950, is an associate justice of the Supreme Court of the United States. He was nominated by President George W. Bush and has saved in the court since January 31st, 2006. Now, follow my mouse now. He says, the second, it, it's telling you that he, he's working for the Pope very clearly. He's bold to say it. Italian, you know, the Pope is in Italy, in the Vatican. He says, the second Italian American and the 11th Roman Catholic to serve on the court. Can you see that now? No more questions asked. Let's go the down for let's go further down to the next Supreme Court justice. We take on Sonia Sotomaya, all right? And we go to find the page on Sonia Sotomaya here. Right? I'm not going to read too much because it's already very bold he says Sonia Sotomaya, all right? Born June 25, 1954, is an Associate Justice of the Supreme Court of the United States, serving since August 2009. She has this distinction of being its first Justice of Hispanic Heritage, the first Latina. Its third, re-follow my mouse again, its third female Justice and its twelfth Roman Catholic Justice. Woo! How many have we gone through? Even the Jews are working for the Pope. Roman Catholic just showed you that. Surprising already? Let's go to the next Supreme Court Justice. Elena Kagan. It's going to be the last. We've gone through how many Supreme Court Justices now? Let's count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We've gone through seven. And they're all Roman Catholic. And we're on the eighth one. Now, there's a justice that died, I think, last year or a year, uh, uh, maybe two years back. I don't quite remember. Justice Scalia. Since he's dead, we're not going to do any investigation. Him. But I bet you if we went in to look at Justice Scalia, you'll find that he was also Roman Catholic. Let's go now to Elena Kagan. All right. Elena Kagan. For those... Who think, all right, that um, Elena Kagan is Jewish? It already says here in his page, on her page, you can see Kagan and her family lived in third floor apartment on West End Avenue and 17th Street and attended Lincoln Square Synagogue, showing you that he's a Jew. So, for anybody who say, oh, the Jews run the United States of America, immediately you see that, right? You just say, oh, it's the Jews. It will even go give you some more information. So you believe. He says, Kagan was independent and strong-willed in her youth. And according to a former law partner, clashed with the Orthodox rabbi over the aspects of her bar mitzvah. And you fall flat and say, we told you. It's the Jews. They leave you the crumbs, the bread crumbs. All right? But let's dig further and see what's up with Elena Kagan. So we've scrolled down the page of Elena Kagan here. And we're going to go to a part, it says, that people won't particularly know what's going on. I'm going to show you how Elena Kagan is related and is working for the Pope against you, the American people, and against the rest of the world. All right? Now he says, Kagan joined the faculty of the University of Chicago Law School. Hmm. So let's click on the Chicago Law School and see what's going on. University of Law School, Chicago. And we're in the University of Chicago Law School here, right? And it says, the University of Chicago Law School is the graduate school of law at the University of Chicago. 
It was founded in 1902 by a coalition of donors led by John D. Rockefeller. Wow! Who is John D. Rockefeller? He is the magnet, the person who made petroleum what it is today. He owned all the petroleum industries in America at one point in time. Now, the question nobody ever asks you is where did John D. Rockefeller get the money to start buying industries and digging petroleum? It's something a history lesson for you. But at the end of the day, if you've done your research like I have done mine, John D. Rockefeller was a stooge of the Vatican. That's how he got the gold. Because way back in the day, you could only trade with gold. And the people who accumulated all the gold in the world and still do today, own it as the only valuable piece of money which doesn't lose its value. It's the Vatican. Right? So, we have gone through, let's count again, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight Supreme Court justices, including the ones that you thought were Jewish. And all you see is that they have ties with the Pope and they're running and making the laws and binding you to the Pope and the Vatican to control you. So people always wonder, like one of the things that is so surprising is like in the United States of America, we have a lot of sick people. This is supposed to be the greatest country in the earth with all the technology and advancements in agriculture. But why are there so many sick people? Not just people sick in their bodies, people sick in their mind as well. Why is that? Because if you have a strong virile nation, people who are strong physically and mentally, they are always going to be a problem for the Pope. They can't control people. You can't control people who are strong in their bodies and strong in their minds. So you have to then make them weak. That's why the foods that you eat have so much poison. That that's why the water you drink is so much poison to make you weak in body and in mind so that you will never be able to stand up against the Pope, but you lay down for the new world order. Like I've said, the way to go about this is not to start any problem, arms, carry arms or problems with your regular friendly Roman Catholic people who have no clue. The problem you have is with the hierarchy. And the only way you can go about handling them and settling this business is to make sure that you go back to studying your Bible. It was the thing that brought the, the Vatican have problems that started the Reformation. The Reformation made the, the Roman Catholic Empire to break up which they are still fighting till today to get back. It's that Bible. That's why they contradict the Bible on every single thing. It's not just a religious book. It's a history book. It will make you wise. It will show you real wisdom and logic so you can understand things. So there's one more person that we have to take a look at. He's the current vice president of the United States of America. His name is Mike Pence. Okay? Mike Pence right here the current president of the United States of America. Now, we're going to scroll down to his page, Wikipedia page, and I'm going to show you something. Early life and career, all right? I'm going to read it to you, okay? He says, Michael Richard Mike Pence was born on June 7, 1959 in Columbus, Indiana, one of six children of Nancy Jane Nee Cowley and Edward J. Pence Jr., right? Who ran a group of gas stations. It's showing you the John D. Rockefeller connections right there. Gas stations. There's a real reason why that's mentioned. Right? In this page. 
His family were Irish Catholic Democrats. Whew. There is another stooge right here working for the Pope. Mike Pence is a stooge of the Vatican. All right? No questions asked. Irish Catholic Democrats. Right there. Now, with all the information and facts I've presented to you, I hope that you take this a little bit seriously. Because if you're racist, I mean, if you're racist, and if you're white, and you heard that the whole Supreme Court justices in America were black, and you heard that the Senate, right, and the House of Representatives were black, I'm telling you, you wouldn't sleep easy if you're white. If you're racist, you wouldn't sleep easy. It would be a problem for you. It would roll some heads that you have a whole black Supreme Court and you have a whole black Senate and a whole black House of Representatives. So if you're racist, this is the right time to be racist. Be racist against the Vatican hierarchy. Don't let them take control of your world and your country. That's why they remove the Bible from everything in the United States. Because studying the Bible, the Bible was the problem. It was the problem that broke down the Roman Catholic Kingdom in which Martin Luther started the Reformation and John Wycliffe and some other uh, uh, priests and nuns and monks who saw this. That King James Bible, that 1611 King James Bible was a problem. The only way to get around this is to go back to studying your Bible. The Bible was the thing that brought them down. It will still be the same thing that will bring the Vatican down. All right. So with that said, I come to the, uh, today's end and presentation. And uh, I hope you learned something. And I advise you to subscribe and stay tuned. And study. And as I always say, I'll leave you with these words. Don't believe anything you hear. Only look with your eyes and see with your brain. Thanks and bye-bye.